Hi guys, this is Jar Art Spy and welcome to another tutorial. Now I just quickly want to apologise for there not being a tutorial last Thursday. I do apologise for that. Um, uh, I literally um, recorded the video, uploaded it, when it got to about 80% it failed and I thought, okay that's weird. Did it again, failed again. I um, re-rendered it in a different file format, uploaded it again, failed. Um, for some reason YouTube didn't like that video at all, we just didn't like the um, that specific tutorial, like I could upload anything else. But that one just wouldn't upload, so I didn't have another one ready to upload, so I thought I would just skip it and um, carry on this week. So if you didn't watch my vlog or my um, uh, Friday Night Live on Friday, then you won't know, but the basic plan of my tutorials is to do one every Tuesday and one every Thursday. Um, and then if you get a like, if you get like a c combined 40 likes, on Tuesday's tutorial and Thursday's tutorial then we will be um, doing a bonus tutorial on Saturday so like if you get 20 on one, 20 on the other then it's 40 likes um, but actually I just hit 31 likes on my um, on the scope power up effect um, which I thought was, no not the scope power up, sorry the 3D stroke effect um, which I was really happy about, I thought it was amazing um, my, I've never had 30 likes on a video before so thanks for that guys, really appreciate it and let's see if we can get on this video but no, let's just get right into it. We're going to do some 3D motion tracking in this, this tutorial. Um, now, I'm going to split it into two parts, hence why this part is up on Monday. And then tomorrow's part, Tuesday's video, will be the actual 3D stuff. Because it does take some time, I don't want it to be a super long tutorial. Um, so yeah, first thing, we're just going to import our um, cinematic here. So I've got my cinematic. I'm going to drag it into composition. I presume you know how all this stuff... Oh, it's been one of death. Give it a sec, because my... I need to clean my computer out, it's going quite slow recently. Um, right, so we've got a cinematic here, we play through it, you see it kind of pans through like this. And I'm just going to tell you quickly, the key to motion tracking is to have a cinematic that the um, uh, that there isn't much external movement, so external kind of um, factors. So as, as you can see, we've got these papers flying around here. Now that will off put the tracking data in um, uh, Buju. We'll be using Buju in this, by the way. Um, so when we do this, um, Buju will think that they're stationary objects, but the camera is moving a lot because they're moving a lot. Now we can counteract that in Buju, which I'll show you in a second. But that's why some people have struggle with things moving in their scenes and so on. But it's not generally to do with your fail motion tracking. It's to do with the fact that there are external things moving, making it look like the camera's moving. So as you can see, there's some like the dust in the bottom right hand corner moving there, and um, which Bougie might pick up, it might not, but like the paper it will definitely pick up. So um as but the like the actual scene itself, so like these cardboard um cardboard, wooden boxes, like this wooden pallet, the walls, this roof, they're all actually stationary, so it's going to track those points fine. We're just going to need to avoid tracking these points. Now I'm going to show you how to do that in after in Buju itself. So I'm going to make this roughly 8 seconds long. Um, so you can, what you can do is you can drag this down, the work area, uh, hold shift to snap it, then right click the actual grade up area above it and click trim comp to work area, and now your composition is the same length. Um, and obviously we've got the menu chase score spectating thing, so we're just going to scale it up a little bit, not too much, and then we're just going to reposition it so it kind of avoids that. So now we've got a nice cinematic here ready to be rendered out. So let first thing, we've got the whole area selected, we're going to go to composition, oh, composition, add to render queue. You then want to go click on the output module, change the format to QuickTime. Uh, untick audio output in the format options make sure it's H264 and quality 100 now you can also do photo JPEG which is down here somewhere there it is and that will decrease the f if you've got not got enough space on your hard drive then use photo JPEG but this file will create a roughly 500 meg to 1.5 gig video file um, and bear in mind that the original cinematic was 15 meg this one we're rendering out in MOV format will be um, uh, like 1.5 gig, so it does take up a lot of space. And I'm just going to call this Buju, Village Buju, and then we'll click render. Now we'll give that a second to render and we'll open up Buju. So Buju, Buju. I'm using Buju 5 for this. 
Now there are some bugs in Bougie 5. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people have problems with it, but because you, if you know what the bugs are, then you can generally avoid them. So I'm going to show you how to avoid the big bugs, big bugs in Bougie, which is ironic because the icon for Bougie is a ladybird, which is kind of ironic. Um, essentially, we just, we just wait for this render out, and actually we can have a look at how big the file format is. Um, uh, the, 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 and as you can see, if we look at the file format, you can see it's oh, oh it's only 150 meg. It's not too bad. Um, when you sorry, when you export it from Cinema 4D, it goes to like 1.5 gig, which you'll see in the next part of the tutorial. Um, so we've got a cinematic now. We're going to go into Bougie. So Bougie looks pretty complicated if you've never used it before, but it is actually pretty simple. So what you do is click Import Sequence. And then this this little thing will pop up here. You go to your hard drive or like wherever you saved that .mov from After Effects. So I'm gonna go through all these different files I saved it in. And then voila, here we go. All right, and then click open. And as you can see it's got the first frame here, then the last frame here. Now you want to change the frame rate to 59.94 frames per second because that's the frame rate of the clip. Now if you click apply, watch the frame rate drop. So now it's gone back to 25. Now that's the main bug in Bougie 5. Um, a lot of people have problems with this and that's why you get shaky tracks because um, the frame rate gets reset. So if you click 59.94 again, hit apply again, you'll see it doesn't change back, it just stays like that. So then we can just click close. So now you can actually see the little blue thing here, you can actually drag, drag it through and you can play through your cinematic. So there we go, we've got the cinematic ready now. So the next thing to do is to get rid of these, um, this paper. Now to do that, we're going to use something. It's pretty much masking, but it's using something called a poly mask. Now a poly mask is something I don't often see being used in motion tracking tutorials. So this is kind of going quite in depth into it, thinking about it. Um, but what you want to do is you want to click the poly mask button on the first frame. Then you want to click once, kind of roughly here, and just drag, and then like click once and then move, click and literally it's not like click and drag, it's just click. And we basically selected the entire area where the paper's flying around. And there we have a mask type thing. Now you can move along a bit, go to maybe here. Uh, we're gonna go to here, we're just gonna drag it down a bit. No need to make individual keyframes for this, which is pretty useful. So you can just it add them in automatically. So it like gets like this, then we're gonna fold a couple more frames and all papers start dying down. So we can go like down. So basically now as we move the mask out of the way, is the scene as more points to track. So it's not gonna track those points when the paper's flying around now. So if we do this, and then the paper's stopped, and then roughly I'm gonna move it a little bit here. So just a little bit, and then go to the next frame after that. Just by dragging it along or by pressing uh I think it's this one. I'm not sure, it's one of these buttons down here that looks like the forward button and then dragging it completely off. Um, so now it's just going to jump from being on there to off. So now if it goes to the start you can see that it's masking the paper and it's closing it's, it's closing automatically without adding keyframes um, on the actual mask and then as it fails it flies off and then we're done. So that's pretty much a poly mask. Now you can add that over fire, dust, um, papers flying around, even players. So if you want to track a scene with players, then you can do that. Um, so then we're just going to go ahead and click this button, Track Features, which is the next one down. And then we'll hit Advanced and go up a couple sensitivities. So you can bring this up. So like the lower it is, the less sensitivity, so the less points there are to track. I generally go two above where it normally is. Um, that's pretty much it. Then just click Start. Now this can take a while depending on your computer. You can see I've got I've got quite a powerful computer, but it is still going pretty slowly. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause this, and I'm going to come back to you once it's done. So we're back, and when it finished, it it went went through the um, like the scanning thing twice again, um, but quite quickly. That was just basically saving it. So once it's done, it will be like look like this, be on the last frame with all these red crosses with yellow lines. Now as we play through it now, you can see that. Um, all these red crosses and lines are actually tracked to the scene um, but they all are kind of disappearing, adding new ones in, all that kind of stuff and you can also see oh, there appears to be someone with a jack camera outside my house which is quite inconvenient go away please, thank you um, so as you can see, as the poly mask decreases you can see that more points get added into the area that aren't but 
they still aren't actually tracking the paper. It's pretty cool. Dun, dun, dun. And they're not tracking the paper, and then when it disappears completely, more track points. So it's pretty cool. Um, so now I'll go back to the first frame, and you want to click camera solve. You then want to click optimize camera path smoothness, and then click start. And this one will go a lot quicker than the last one, as you can see, it's going pretty quickly here. Um, it will it will kind of like bung up on a frame, and then it will kind of zoom past loads, and then kind of stopping in like it has here. Then it will shoot off in a second. Um, Cause it's just like there we go. And again, it goes through it a couple times, saving it. Um, and there we go. Now we've got these blue and yellow dots. Now if we scroll through it, you can see that these dots are actually properly tracked into the scene. Now these are basically the tracking points now. So it's pretty cool. And even though um, we've got a poly mask over this area, you can still see these dots here. That's because what's happened is Buju has got the data from the camera movement from here and it can tell that the camera is moving in this direction so towards the right so it's basically calculated the speed and the position of the track points that it's going to be moving at so it's actually automatically tracked the scene that we told it not to track um, but correctly without tracking the flying paper which is really good it's a really useful feature so it's actually um, basically guessed at where the points would be and it's done it really well it's done a really good job um, we're pretty much done in Bougie now. You can add a test object to see what the tracking's like. So you click add test object, this will pop up. And it, as that, when that's up, we can drag through and you can see this object is actually fully tracked into the scene. Um, and it's like moving position and stuff. Now you can see it does go like in front of this, but that's just because it doesn't know that this is actually in front like um, a pillar. So we can actually just mask that out later in After Effects. But so as you can see, we've actually got this nicely tracked scene here. Um, you can delete that now. Click, just click delete and close. Um, so that we are pretty much done enough in Bougie now. The only thing left to do is click export camera solve and then export camera solve. Change the export type to C4D. Go to browse and then you can choose where you want to save it. I'm going to go to same file just so I don't lose it. There's this one, this one, this one. I should have learned not to leave my window open because all the cars drive past and make loads of noise. Um, and actually, I've just noticed there's actually some text up here that I've missed on cropping off. Hmm. Bad me. Oh well, it's only kind of like, kind of not in super important. Um, right, so we're going to call this um, Village C4D. Save. Then the last thing to do is click Scale Scene by 100. So then hit Save. And it will go through this process of saving it as a Cinema 4D file. And that's pretty much the end of this tutorial, guys. Um, the next tutorial tomorrow will be going into actually opening up Cinema 4D with this and adding in 3D objects and motion tracking. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you kind of managed to do a track as well as this. Um, if not, just try and record a cinematic in a different place or use a different cinematic. Um, let's see if we can get 30 likes, guys, because I know we can hit it, maybe 25, um, but 30 would be awesome. And then don't forget that there will be another tutorial Thursday. Um, and there might be a bonus one Saturday. So yeah, I shall see you guys in my next tutorial.